Hello everybody, in this video tutorial we are going to automate scheduling for apartment buildings, multifamily housing projects, or it could be similar projects like hotels for example. You can see in this little project that I've quickly modeled this morning, we have four apartments and two different apartment types. We have apartment A, and there are two instances of apartment A, and there is apartment B, which we also have two instances. If you schedule model groups in Revit, there's not much you can do. You can only know uh, how many of each you have. So we know we have two apartment A and two apartment B. I've created a Dynamo script that allows you to take everything included inside of each group. So everything included inside of each apartment and to add um, a numbering system and to fill up the multi-category schedule. Let me bring in the Dynamo player. I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Uh, the script is called set group elements parameter. Going to open it. There's a few parameters you can set up. I'll uh, skip the explanations for now. You just need to make sure that uh, the model groups are properly named, that they have the right prefix. I'm going to run the script. And you can see that these multi-category schedules have been filled up with all the information you need. So, for example, we know there are 20 walls for uh, totals for the apartment A, there are four folding 48 inches door and so on. I will uh, revert this change, so control Z, and show you all the steps to repeat to use this Dynamo script. But before doing that, uh, go to revitpure.com slash groups to download um, all the Dynamo scripts mentioned in this video. So to add the group numbering and scheduling and a bonus Dynamo script to automate the view creation for each model groups. And you will also get two free PDF guides that are called pamphlets about model groups to help you learn and understand groups inside of Revit. So a PDF guide just like that. So that is revitpure.com um, slash groups to download all these free resources. All right, now we're going to recreate this Dynamo script. I will show you all the step. The first step is to add the group type and group instance parameters. So in this case, they've already been added to the project. I'll show you what I did. You can see that I went to the project parameters menu and they are right here, group instance and group type. And when you add these parameters, I'll click on the pencil icon to edit the parameter. In your case, you might want to click this one to add a new parameter. Make sure that the parameter is, well, first properly named and it is set as a text type of parameter. By default, you will get length, but you want to use text. And make sure to check this box. Values can vary by group instance. This is super important. Then you are going to check all the categories of Revit elements that can be included inside of the groups. So walls, doors, ceilings, windows, anything. So make sure you don't forget anything and also include model groups. That is super important. So uh, if you miss something, you can go back and add them, but still. So create these two parameters, group type and group instance. And when that is done, when you enter the plan view and select one of the group, for example, you should see the group type and group instance parameters. By default, they're going to be empty. And when you tab select one of the element inside of the group, you should also see uh, these two parameters, group type and group instance. You can try a few different categories to be sure, uh, like the furniture. You can see that these parameters are also there for the furniture. All right, the second step is quite simple. It is to set a numbering system. Make sure that the way that you create group is organized. In this case, we have this model group is called app A course for apartment A and then the apartment B is called app B so always use the same prefix and then you can use a numbering system with either using a letter or a number the third step is to start the dynamo script and add custom packages we're going to go to the manage tab click on dynamo here clicking on new in the packages uh, right here you need to add the clockwork package and if it is not installed on your version of Dynamo, search for a package. 
over here might take a minute or so then type in clockwork you can see in my case it is installed if not just click on this plus icon to install it all right we're ready to start creating the script you're going to add a few nodes the first one is element classes if you're using previous versions of dynamo so in revit 2022 or earlier version this node might be um, named differently uh, it might be element types N not sure anyway in revit 2023 or more recent version it's going to be element classes then i'm going to bring all elements of class and oh yeah before we're going too further away i will switch the script to manual mode so it doesn't constantly run in the background and i will also bring a node call element name just like this and plug them all together and here in element class this is a drop down menu i'm going to find groups a group just like this and we can try to run the script to see what we have so far and you can see that we have all the model groups included in the projects will be there the next thing we're going to do is to filter in this case we only have groups that start with app but maybe in your model you have some groups that are not apartments for other parts of the building so we want to remove them and use a prefix filtering for that we are going to be using list uh, group by key going to bring this here i'm going to move this down a little bit and plug the string to the keys and the elements to the list i will run the script to show you what this does um, and you can see that it identified two different keys app a and app b um, so now we have a list of all the groups and the list of unique group types or unique apartments in the project so we're going to group these nodes together just like this call them find unique group type names and this is where if you want you could use a filter by bool node to remove all the groups that are not using app in our case it won't be necessary but this is always something that you can add if you want so the fourth step is to create a unique number for each group instance i'm going to add a few nodes the first is going to be list count and i'm going to plug this to the groups and set the level click on the arrow and set level two then i'm going to bring in a sequence node just like this i'm going to use the list count so basically it just tells you the total amount of groups in the project or that we have filtered this is going to be the amount and for the start and the step i'm going to use a code block and we're going to use number one which means the first number of unique apartments is going to start at one and each step is going to be one as well so for example if we run the script you can see that the sequence created is one two one two it creates two different sequences now this generates a number but we don't want a number we want to append it to a text based parameter which means that you need to convert uh, this number to an object to a, a text basically i'm going to use the string from object node plug them in just like this and then i will bring the string length so to know how long is uh, the initial text the initial name of the group i'm going to plug this to the unique keys then I'm going to bring in the string insert node. So quickly, if we just run the script before moving on, uh, this tells me that the first group has five characters. And so we know that we're gonna place the unique number at the end of these five uh, characters. And currently we have the one, two number and we're ready to add this number to the group name but before doing that a simple final step i'm going to double click to create a code block because i want to add a separator so i'm going uh, to type these values just a dash plus 
x and x is going to be the string that we're going to be plugging in so if i run the script again to show you what this does you can see dash one dash two and dash one and dash two again So this will be to insert. This is the text value that I want to insert at the end of the previous one. The unique keys are going to be the, the initial string and the index is going to be the string length. So if I run the script again, you can see the result app-a.1, app-a-2 and so on. Step number five, attribute unique mark to each group instance. Now I'm going to add a node that is called element set parameter by name. And I will add a string node to properly name this parameter. This is going to be called group instance. I'm going to plug this to the parameter name. And the string insert is going to be the value. And the elements, I will just move all of this below. It's going to be the groups like this. And here I might, I might group all these nodes together and I will call this just changing the color by right clicking. This is, will be uh, create unique instance number. In the case of these two nodes, they're going to be called uh, set instance group number okay and before pressing play what this does is we have our four model groups you can see right now the group type and group instance are empty going back to the dynamo script i will cl click on run and what this does as is that it adds a group instance number basically a unique apartment number for each of these groups like this Step number six, assign type and instance numbers to elements part of the group. Going back to Dynamo. Uh, now we're going to bring in a node from the clockwork package. It is called group.members. I will bring this node. And what this does, if I run the script, uh, yeah, I need to plug in, plug it then. So I'm going to plug the groups over here and try again. This nodes takes all the elements included in all groups in the projects. You can see that the first group contains a few walls, a few doors, um, a few furniture element, as well as curves that we don't really need in this case. But this takes all the elements inside of each apartment in our project. And with this nodes, I will then add two, once again, element set uh, parameter by name. I need two of these nodes. I will copy and paste them. In this case, the member elements are going to be the element to which we set the custom parameters. I will add a string node to specify which parameter I want to use in this case. On the top, this is going to be called group instance. Going to plug this to the parameter name. And at the bottom, this is going to be called group type going to plug this to the parameter name over here and the value in the first case for the group instance is going to be the generated string that we found a bit earlier so i'm going to bring this here for the value and for the group type in this case i will bring a new node that is called element point name and I'm going to take the groups themselves and get the group names. And this is going to be the value. The final step before we are ready to run the script is to click on the arrow here and set the levels for the elements. Elements are going to be at level two and the value are going to be at level one. So repeat these steps for the other set parameter by name node. This is L1, just like this. Again, before running the script, what this is going to do, all every single element included inside of the script, currently they have the group type and the group instance parameters. They are empty right now. After we run the script, they should fill up with information from the group. Let's go back to Dynamo. Uh, this seems about right. Let's run the script. 
it says there are warnings don't worry about it <laughs> it's just that some categories of elements don't have these parameters like curves but it doesn't matter because if you go uh, look at the group type and group instance for this wall for example it says group type is apartment one and group instance is apartment a1 and if i select the same wall but on this different instance of the apartment you can say in this case it says app a2 and let's select a furniture element from this one it says apartment b for the type and apartment b2 for this one and uh, what is nice about setting all this information this numbering system it makes scheduling much more easier you can filter in group and sort by using uh, information for each apartment so you can easily get, get all the quantities every single door every single wall every single piece of furniture for a specific apartment uh, whether they are grouped by type or you get every single apartment divided uh, so if you want to have quantities takeoffs for your apartments this is super convenient so that's it for the dynamo scripts and once again revitpure.com slash groups if you want to download free pdf resources about revit groups and two dynamo scripts to automate creation we just saw the first one to automate revit groups numbering and scheduling and there's a bonus script about automating the group views creation so to automatically create floor plans and ceiling plans for each type of apartments for example of each type of uh, hotel rooms uh, so that's it for now thank you very much and see you soon